Daily Minutes of Saturday. This is Peter John of Emergency Radio. Today our show is in English. And now the radio propagation report compiled by Golf Zero, Kilowatt Yankee Alpha, Golf 4, Bravo Alpha Oscar, and Golf 3, Yankee Lima Alpha on Friday the 9th of October. The sun severely disrupted the HF bands again this week. A high-speed solar wind stream with a south-facing BZ magnetic component continued to interact strongly with the Earth's geomagnetic field. Strong G3-level geomagnetic storming was observed at high latitudes and the K-index hit 7 on Wednesday evening. There were long periods on Wednesday and Thursday where it sat stubbornly at 5 or more. The net result was a very depleted F2 ionospheric layer. At noon on Wednesday, the critical frequency as measured by the Chiltern Ionosonde was just 3.7 MHz, indicating a maximum usable frequency over a 3,000 km path of only 15 MHz. The only good news is that this means these are good conditions to look for auroral propagation on the higher HF and VHF bands. Further storming may remain possible during the next week due to ongoing coronal holes. Sky watchers should be alert for visible aurora displays once it's dark. With the solar flux index at more than 130, if the geomagnetic storming decreases, there is a chance of decent DX if and when the F2 layer recovers. And now the VHF and up propagation news. The autumn months of October and November are often a good time to expect tropo lifts due to the presence of areas of high pressure at this time of year. These can be slow moving and provide several days of enhanced conditions on VHF, UHF and microwave bands. The indications are that we may have a large high over Scandinavia for most of the coming week, extending a ridge towards the UK and down past Spain to the Azores. This could again bring lift conditions to many parts of Britain, favouring east-west paths across the North Sea to southern Scandinavia and the Baltic states, with the secondary option southwards past western France to northwest Spain and the Canaries. There is a possibility that the North Sea paths may not quite last to the end of the week, though, as low pressure reaches northern Scandinavia by Friday. There are no major meteor showers this week, so continue to look for the best random meteor scatter QSO opportunities in the early mornings as the Earth's rotation and orbital path combine to sweep up the maximum number of meteoric particles. The moon reaches apogee today and its declination goes negative, meaning shorter but daylight moon windows with high losses in the coming week. And that's all for the propagation team for this week and for our TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS News. This is Glenn Hauser with World of Radio 1794. As you reported a few weeks ago, the mighty KBC from the Netherlands via Germany was testing a new frequency for its weekly Saturday night broadcast to North America, 7395 instead of 7375. The test for was for one hour at 23 to midnight UT, and we were wondering why. Richard Langley in New Brunswick got the explanation from Uncle Eric. We have neighbors on 7365 and 7385. In some parts, there's interference. Several listeners are complaining about. If we move to 7395, we only have one station on 7385, and the time would be one hour earlier at 23 until... O2 UT, that is Saturday into UT Sunday. So I checked October 4th around midnight 45 and found that KBC was only S8 while WHRI on 7385 was 55 over 9. Cuban Jamming and Radio Marti on 7365 added up to only 35 over 9. So KBC was getting mighty squeezed. However, as the hour out later, KBC was getting weaker and WHRI was splattering upon 7375, although there was some intermittent utility pulsing on their chosen new frequency, 7395. In any event, the latest news from Eric von Willigen of the mighty KBC, the last transmission on 7375 at midnight to 03 UT is October 11th. Afterwards, we'll be on 7395 effective October 17th into 18th at 23 until 02 UT. (laughs) 